All right, well, uh, joining us for more on this in studio is uh, Nehau's Deputy uh, General Secretary, December Mavuso. Thank you very much, uh, sir, for uh, joining us and to uh, obviously, hopefully, iron out for us what uh, the issues or the deadlock seems uh, to be at this point. Just as a start, you know, yesterday the, the, the conclusion of the negotiations uh, with the government uh, had to be halted. Um, there were some sticky issues that could not be uh, resolved. Tell us what your ideal, uh, uh, what you'd like ideally to happen and, and what's stopping these negotiations. From, from sort of uh, making inroad. Okay, no, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, let me just uh, explain that uh, on the 18th, um, government presented what they called a final offer to to Labour uh, in the bargaining council. An offer which had um, a few changes in uh, uh, three of the sticky areas that were identified uh, before, and Labour accepted uh, the. The, the draft agreement with a view to take it to its members uh, for a mandate. Now, <clears throat> at that time, even yesterday, there are unions that uh, indicated that they would they are ready to sign. Mm -hmm. But uh, ourselves as Nehau uh, and a few others, uh, we had asked for time to take the new draft um, offer to our members for consultation for mandating before we, we, we could uh, sign. Um, you know that when you take a, 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 a matter like that to members, it will be either, uh, the response will either say sign or reject the, the, the offer. So at this stage, uh, we started yesterday as a union, and we'll complete our process in two weeks' time. So at this stage, we, we can't say that uh, we, uh, we will sign or not sign. But as I say, why different stages as unions, others have indicated that they have already signed, others have signed, as I understand, yesterday, together with government. Flo, well, sorry to interrupt, but what, I, what I'd like to know, there's one particular union that, that has signed on Pop Crew, that's the Police and Prison Civil Rights Union. Um, do you somewhat feel betrayed when an organization like this signs, and shouldn't you be one voice going into these type of discussions? Not at all. We, <coughs> we're not betrayed, uh, or we don't feel betrayed at all. Remember, we, we are independent trade unions in the first place. Uh, and secondly, that we have different internal processes that we follow. Um, a union like Nehau, for instance, that is spread all over the public service, its processes will be different from a union that organizes just one section of the public service, for instance, like police or nurses and so on. So ours will take more time than the rest. So that's why uh, earlier on I was saying, why different stages, uh, the, <clears throat> for them it might be easy and quick to, to get a mandate for us, and maybe it is not like that. That's, we, we need to at least to reach out to our members. Now you've spoken about the fact that you would need or require more time. To, uh, paint for us a picture of why certain unions would require less and uh, so, some unions would require uh, more time. I mean, you mentioned the fact that you know you would be some are bigger uh, bigger unions and some are smaller unions. Uh, but I suppose that you know when when one has spoken to the union to their members, you know a lot of the members would kind of speak with uh, with one voice in any case. So uh, what what is the difference in terms of the numbers uh, that you, you represent of people that you represent the membership? of the particular uh, union? Uh, well, I, ca I, can, I can paint a picture of uh, the different numbers of yeah. different unions, uh, now, but uh, there will be those larger unions. We, one of them, so it will be another, and there will be others that uh, follow, uh, uh, and so on. But what is important is what processes do you follow internally mm -hmm. okay. that, that determines that. So it doesn't, irrespective of the number, what processes. Okay. We believe in direct engagement with members. Mm -hmm. Others would, would, for instance, re rely on uh, email communication, on flyers, on, you know, and so on. But as a union, we believe in direct engagement with members so that, and that will give us a sense of really what majority of members are saying. Mm -hmm. And even there, it doesn't mean that everybody will agree or, or everybody will disagree. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there will be a section of uh, people who say, no, we, we're happy, uh, or others will say, we're not happy, but uh, we can live with this and so on. But it will then depend on what the majority, at least, of our membership says, and that will be the decision. Now, Mr. Mabusa, there's something I'm, I'm struggling a little bit here with. So, say for example, now you've got a situation where uh, Pop Crew has, has signed, right? right? And now you're still taking time, and if you decide that you're not going to sign, 
and a better deal is then presented. Okay, so now how now sign, it doesn't sign and wants a better deal and a better deal is that's presented. Does Pop Crew then go, oh, hang on, we didn't know that there was a, a better deal that was, that was on the table or you would be willing to give a better deal, but our members have already signed. So what happens to their less than better, if I can put it that way, offer that they've already signed? Because it's now, you know, the signature's already there on the dotted line, um, but you guys might then get a better, a, a better offer. What happens in that case? If there's an improved offer yeah. by the employer, remember it's one employer. Yes. Um, if there's a, an improved offer, it will replace whatever initial offer was there, and uh -huh. it will apply to everybody as long as it enjoys the majority signature of the trade unions represented in the bargaining council. Let's take, for instance, uh, this current deal. If it was to be signed by a majority of the trade unions in the council, mm it will enjoy majority, it will be implemented, it will be binding to all of us. Mm -hmm. Even if Nehau was, was not at, at to sign uh, uh, completely, mm -hmm. or the Public Servants Association, if uh, they would say decide we're not signing at all, but if majority of the trade unions put their signature, it's binding to everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So can one union then hold back uh, uh, the others, in a sense? It's unlikely, not okay. with the current arrangement in the, in the, public, in the public service. Okay. Um, because uh, there's no single union you know, that holds the majority okay. status. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we, we, we are a collective of trade unions mm -hmm. that uh, uh, holds 50% mm -hmm. of, the, of the bargaining power in the, in the public service. The employer holds another 50% with 50%. Mm -hmm. So if a uh, <coughs> majority okay. of the trade unions represent that side, the only, no single union can hold back. Okay. All right, December, before we let you go, uh, Flo spoke earlier about giving us what, what you consider an ideal scene or a perfect agreement. Um, it seems you're keeping your cards close to your chest. Tell us what a good deal is. <laughs> well, a, a good deal would be a deal that uh, uh, will satisfy the needs of the our detail, members. Deep on the, deep <laughs> on the yeah. details yeah. of that good deal. Because we the don't understand deal, why okay, let me just make an, let me make an example. The current for, uh, uh, deal gives CPI plus 1.5 for the lowest, which is 7%. Mm -hmm. Our compromise position would have been CPI plus 2 for the lowest, and then uh, on a slider scale, CPI plus 1.5 for the middle, CPI plus 1, and so on. Unfortunately, that's not what is on the table. Right? So <clears throat> that's what the, uh, the employers offered. But the secondly is that we wanted uh, the, the housing allowance to be given to all uh, workers irrespective of their marital status because currently there's a discriminatory practice that if you, two public servants are married mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. only one gets the housing allowance. Mm -hmm. A matter we've been fighting for years. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, this time around, they've agreed the only thing is that the implementation is going to be staggered. We would have loved that all of them get it this year. So there's a group that is going to receive this year, another one next year in terms of the proposed agreement and so on. But uh, those are issues that we said at least there's an improvement there because that matter has been dragging on since 2007. Finally, it is coming to uh, implementation, but in a staggered you know, fashion because of what government uh, says uh, is uh, financial constraints. So uh, there's a pay progression issue that the educators and TVET lecturers have not been getting that is, is not equivalent to the rest of the public servants. It is coming in now, but again in a staggered fashion. We'd have loved to, uh, government to feed them immediately because uh, for years they've, they've been suffering, with, you know. So yeah, uh, it is not a, a a, a, an agreement to be celebrated, but it, it, there are those areas that uh, we think that uh, uh, there's a quite an improvement. But on the salary adjustment, workers would have wanted more. Remember, there's a vet increase that yes. has come in, petrol hikes, um, there's just a lot of uh, pressure from our own members. So we, we think that, um, yeah, it would have been really better if a uh, 2% uh, or 3% would have been ended. Thank All you right. very much. Thank I you very much. still keeping his cards to his chest. <laughs> and that's okay, I think, for now, right? But we'll get yes. uh, more information, yes. of yes. course, as uh, the week sort of uh, progresses. Thank you very much, Mr. December Mavoso, for giving us uh, your time, of course, there.